My own recent four-wheel drive builds can be described as extravagant. And during the building of them, I have received many uh, comments, messages, emails, all kinds, saying, please won't you do something basic? So I thought, it is a very good idea. And what I have here is the result of that request. I have taken uh, the idea that here's somebody that has very low budget, but wants to go over landing. And I will share with you now the process of the vehicle purchase, the, the equipping of the vehicle, and all of the components that are absolutely necessary to go over landing and I have omitted everything that is a nice to have. This then is my version of a backpacker's overlander. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. The vehicle is being built for my son-in-law Cameron and Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Their goal is to go exploring. Nothing too remote or too difficult. But they do want to go off-road. But they have a budget. They'll build it under my guidance over the next year. Here is the birth of a very rudimentary storage system. But before we take this any further, let's tackle the question of the Nissan X-Trail. This is just my opinion. If you do not share this opinion, it's okay. It's not like I ran over your puppy. So please don't react as if I did. Because they just bought, and I did help them choose, what I regard as one of the best budget four-wheel drive SUVs available. It's a 2007 Nissan X Trail. And it's a little different from most all-wheel drives in that it is a proper four-wheel drive. I've driven them actually quite a bit. And my idea for the series is to, to do a series on the a budget four-wheel drive. And when I say budget, I'm talking about two young people with very little cash that want to go exploring and we're going to build them the perfect vehicle on the perfect budget, which is very low. For what you want to do is that it is square and spacious, light on fuel, they're cheap to buy, so what did you spend on this one? 7,000. 7,000? For 160,000 Ks. Okay. Yeah. 2007. Okay. Building a budget vehicle is not about price. It's about what you're getting for your money. It's about value. And so there are a few things that it's just plain bad idea to buy the cheapest available because it actually costs more. It has all the potential you need for a vehicle that you can do some meaningful trips with. So what are your requirements for this? Basically, I just want a space that's comfortable enough to sleep in. Even if it's, you know, like compromising a bit on space, that's fine. My biggest requirement is that I want to be able to look out in the morning and see where we are. I don't want to feel, because otherwise we just might as well be in a tent. You know, the whole point of this is I want to be able to open it up and still be in bed, have a cup of coffee and look out and be able to see where we are. That's probably my number one. And um, another thing would probably be if I could have, if I could have it would be space enough to sit up in here. You're not going to have it? Not. Not, not, not. Because even if we don't put the bed in here, the drawer system will go in. Can I have a Persian rug? <laughs> can you have a Persian rug? We'll of have you, one here. Of course you can have a Persian rug. What, what stupid question. I should think so. You can have any rug from any country you like. <laughs> Pick a country. 
um, when they were selecting the vehicle I I put two of two on the table one was the Subaru Forester and the other one was the Nissan X-Trail and I did so because both vehicles are inexpensive light uh, inexpensive to run as daily drivers which they will be using it as a daily driver and uh, but they have four-wheel drive systems that are a little different to your classic all-wheel drive for example an all-wheel drive vehicle will drive in two-wheel drive and then when the traction control system establishes that there is wheel slip wheel spin it will then engage that other axle and drive the car that is the nature of all-wheel drive systems do vary with the Forester and the X-Trail, it's not like that at all. You can actually tell it to be in four-wheel drive. You can make the selection as opposed to leaving the traction control to make the selection. And that is a critical thing in off-road performance. A third option which we considered is the Land Rover Freelander 2. Probably the best performer of all three but also the most expensive, particularly when it comes to operating costs. We all agreed that it was a safer bet to go for a Japanese car. For those of you who are thinking, nah, that's not really the kind of vehicle I'd like to build, here's a short piece on vehicle choice. I selected the X-Trail and that type of vehicle because it's the least expensive true four-wheel drive vehicle. From this point, you're going to go towards pickups, they're more expensive. In other words, you'll pay more for an older vehicle with higher mileage. Then from that point, you're going to go to um, proper four-wheel drive wagons. For example, second generation Pajero, very good. Um, first generation and second generation Prado, or the Prado, the Land Cruiser 90, very good. None of these vehicles are available with low mileage unless you are really lucky. And, and when I say low mileage, I'm talking under 300,000. Above 300,000, if these vehicles have had a hard life and have not been well maintained, then you're going to ask, you're going to be buying problems. So the maintenance records, once you're up there, maintenance records are absolutely vital, okay? First thing. Secondly, if you find a vehicle that's full of roof racks and everything, be very, very careful. Because if it's got lots of modifications to it, it it's the, the, there's a good chance that it will be badly done. Or, if it's got lots of modifications, it's spent a lot of its time in rough terrain. Therefore, it's more worn out. Much better to find a vehicle that has no modifications on it at all, no roof rack, nothing, maybe just a bull bar, but nothing else. And maybe that vehicle has just been used around town. Then you look for the maintenance records. If it's got a full maintenance record and has no modifications, you're onto a winner. Those are the ones you need to chase. It's better to find a vehicle like that with a bit higher mileage than a lower mileage vehicle that has been heavily modified and obviously used for a lot of off-road and expedition travel. Good luck with finding the right vehicle. It isn't easy. I have driven this vehicle, this X-Trail, uh, over some tough sand conditions and it performed very, very well. So I know it's good. So of the two, they selected this one, and I think they made a good decision. Um, Peru. Peru, a Peruvian yes. rug. You heard it here, folks. I'm getting a Perugian rug. Perugian. Perugian. Yes. <laughs> you see, everything is a compromise, one way or the other. It doesn't matter what you think about. So the question is, do they keep an area inside where they can sleep inside the car? Or do they, because the moment you put a fridge in it, there's not enough space for a fridge and a battery and a bed. So then, okay, so if you put a small fridge in there, it's a compromise with the fridge size. And then likewise, a smaller battery, etc., etc. So every decision is a compromise. You, affect, you do one thing and it affects a whole lot of other things. They asked about boxes and access and a very common questions they are. And I, I said to Cameron, well, you're good at woodwork. Why don't you build yourself a draw system? And this is what he built. 
In terms of the fridge, we've been on holiday together and I loaned them my spare 70 litre Snowmaster, which is far too big for this vehicle. But Cameron managed to bolt it down inside. He hasn't even got to the point where he will cover it in carpet. Maybe just as well, because he spilt some bait on it this week. Fresh on chops. And if it had carpet there, it would now be smelling. And this is very rudimentary, but <laughs> it's cheap and it works. And that's, look at that. You can't access, fantastic access. They chose only one drawer and this, uh, there's a gazebo in there, which is really long. So they're also thinking about the shape of all of the kit that they want to carry. So that's what you do when you develop the inside of a vehicle. You, 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 you take out all your kit and you put it in front of it and you say, what's going where? And if you're building your own drawer system, that's the way to do it. And you don't need to spend a lot. This was not expensive. And the only important thing is really, even if you get it wrong, not a big expense, and a huge learning curve, but this must be bolted down. Really important, okay? Especially if you're gonna put a fridge on top of it and bolt the fridge to it. You've gotta make sure that in the event of an accident um, or collision, this cannot move. Vitally important for safety. And the electrical system, again, I said and made sure that they keep things simple. Could even put, if we wanted to, we could have hinges on, we could have coffee, little coffee stands. I'm down for that. New requirement. I'm gonna have so much fun in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. You, you can, can, have, you can, can have, have coffee, st little coffee tables. If you wanted too. to have coffee, coffee tables. They're gonna do coffee tables. <laughs> this man gets me. Tell me, right. tell me when I walk away from this project. <laughs> Coffee stands, There's you're on your own. Coffee machine. Yeah. You're on your own. Coffee machine, yeah. I can get on board with yeah. that. <laughs> How much do you reckon this cost you? Um, so I would say wood cost me about 120. This cost, the actual drawers cost me 60 or so. The sliders? The sliders, yeah. Yes, okay. And they're 120 kgs. Okay. Rated, which is perfect for this. Right. Um, so it comes up, to, and then I bought strapping to actually hold it all down. Right. That comes to about 200 or so. $200. $200. So you've now used it once, the packing system. Yeah. What are its good points and bad points? Um, because it's made of ply, it's not that durable. So I've noticed if I did it a bit better, I could have made it a bit stronger. Um, the nice thing is it's light, easy. And if you make a mistake, it's plywood. It's not that big of a deal. And the practical usage? Pract uh, but yeah, no, I haven't had any worries. Stays nice and snug. Goes back in every time. Okay. And what do we do next? Electrics. Yep. In the next video, I show Cameron how to build a cheap as chips battery split charge system that works. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.